Hey guys, AT, back with you once again. Those of you who knew me from a previous life probably knew that I was a journalist for over a decade, and I've been out of that profession a little bit over a decade. I was torn on whether I was going to comment on the state of this nation following the verdict of Kyle Rittenhouse, but you know what? I think I'm going to. I keep reading all these incendiary posts from news media outlets talking about uh, quoting this person as saying that this was a miscarriage of justice and that this was somehow uh, empowering of white supremacists and all sorts of other incendiary garbage. And I'm stunned and I'm baffled. The outcome of this case is based on centuries of jurisprudence. The case was put before a jury of Mr. Rittenhouse's peers, just as the American justice system affords to anyone. And this jury, which I understand what was comprised of something like seven women, heard the case on the merits of the prosecution, and they heard the defense's case, and they sided with the defense. The prosecution had every opportunity to present a case which would support the allegations that Mr. Rittenhouse committed murder. They failed to meet their burden of proof. That's only the fault of the prosecution. Their evidence was not good, was not sufficient, and the jury agreed and the jury voted as the jury voted, as juries do vote. This is the finest system on earth. This case was tried before a jury. This was not an arbitrary judge that uh, decided that you know he liked AR-15s and that uh, you know, he was going to side with Mr. Rittenhouse. And I keep hearing things like, but he brought an AR-15 and he had an AR-15. And I will join you folks in disliking the idea that you had a 17-year-old out on the streets with an AR-15. I don't like that. But the law doesn't give a damn whether I like it or you like it. The law doesn't care about our feelings because the law is not about feelings. Mr. Rittenhouse did not commit a crime by possessing that firearm. There was no state law violated. The judge reviewed the law and dismissed the count because the law did not support an allegation that he illegally possessed that, that firearm. I do not like the fact that a 17-year-old had an AR-15. But... You can't convict somebody based on feelings. You can't convict somebody based on a law that doesn't exist. And then the news media, several outlets, had circulated the false narrative that he crossed state lines with that firearm and that, it, that that was somehow a criminal offense. He didn't cross state lines with that firearm. That firearm was not secured out of state. I have to applaud the female reporter from the Young Turks, which the Young Turks typically is a left-leaning uh, podcast, a left-leaning uh, news provider. And once she watched the trial and saw the actual real evidence, she issued a retraction and said, you know what, I was wrong about this. I was wrong about Kyle Rittenhouse. The other thing that I think is stunning is that you have media outlets that led people to believe that Kyle Rittenhouse took the lives of people of color. All three of the people that were shot in Kenosha were white people. There wasn't a black life taken at the hands of Kyle Rittenhouse. So spinning this that it has a racial overtone, I'm just, I'm not getting that. I think that you would have to be a purveyor of sensationalistic journalism to report that. You would have to have no journalistic integrity to report that. And I think all of this nonsense out there that is trying to paint average everyday people as racial supremacists of some sort is part of what's tearing this nation apart. You are the problem if that is what you sell to people. We are not are not, are not, by and large, a racist nation. And shame on anyone who thinks so. America is better than that. We are better than that. 
do you have racist individuals out there? Oh, yes, you do, and they exist across the color spectrum. Are they representative of a majority of Americans? Absolutely not. And the, the more that we give energy to an idea, the more the idea thrives and exists. And when we look for the boogeyman on every corner, we find the boogeyman and we keep the boogeyman alive. I don't like, again, that a 17-year-old kid had that rifle. But again, the law doesn't care how you feel or I feel. And I, I think that there's also the idea that, well, if, if Mr. Rittenhouse were an African-American his age and did what he did, it would be a different outcome. We, unfortunately, don't have another case with a really similar set of circumstances with which to compare that right now to say for certain. But I believe within the last week or so, we had an, a person of color whose house was hit improperly by a SWAT raid and he shot at or shot and killed uh, somebody uh, within law enforcement and he was acquitted on self-defense uh, based on probably similar merits to, to what was argued in the Rittenhouse case. So I, uh, I think that these ideas that that that, that verdict was anything but just a product of everyday justice in America under a system with uh, uh, centuries of jurisprudence. It's, it's disingenuous to suggest that it, it was anything else other than that and that it somehow uh, paints America through a uh, racially prejudiced spectrum. So, As a former journalist, shame on the outlets that have serve to divide the, the good people of this country with incendiary rhetoric. Shame on you. I'm A.T., and that's all.